everyone, how's it going? Welcome to a special 30 minute edition of No DQ and A video, courtesy of ZZ surviving one more week, making it to the Tough Enough grand finale. Somebody on Twitter suggested an interesting idea, and I'm going to go with it. If John Cena does not win the WWE title at SummerSlam, I will withdraw my support for ZZ and I will no longer ask people to vote for ZZ. However, if Cena does win on Sunday, I am going to unleash the No DQ Army. I am going to make a phone call to Rift Aronson and all hell will break loose. So there you have it. Vince, if you're listening, if you really do not want ZZ to win, then Cena loses. If Cena wins, we vote ZZ. Hashtag tough enough ZZ. And of course, Vince is not watching this video. Vince doesn't even run his own Twitter account. Let's get down to your questions here from Josh Clark Parker. Hey Aaron, do you think one day we could see Triple H versus Vince in an NXT versus Raw storyline on TV, starting a new brand extension? It does seem like a good idea to elevate NXT. If WWE was going to do another brand extension or another interpromotional storyline, that would be the way to go. Elevate NXT. Everyone knows Triple H is behind it, and it plays off a of real life where Triple H is having a lot of involvement with NXT and Raw is Vince's baby. So you would have real life implemented into the storyline. I think it would it, it could work very well. The problem is Vince's age. I, I think the ship has sailed with Vince being part of a major storyline again. A couple of years ago, they were planting the seeds for Vince to be part of a storyline against Triple H, a power struggle storyline late 2013, and it ended up not happening. Vince was not part of that storyline, and it got dropped. So I think that just because of his age... It's unlikely he will get involved in a regular storyline again, uh, which is unfortunate because I think Vince running Raw versus Triple H running NXT would be very compelling television. The other issue is NXT being a developmental brand, and I think WWE wants to keep it as a developmental brand. They do not want to make it an equal brand to Raw and SmackDown. They're, they're taking advantage of the hype. You know, a lot of people are very high on NXT and love it as an alternative to the main roster content. But at the same time, there's only so far they want to go with NXT. They don't want to make it bigger than Raw or SmackDown or even attempt to do it. I mean, who knows if it would work or not. Even though there's a lot of internet fan support, there's no guarantee that if NXT got full exposure that it would do the numbers that Raw and SmackDown do. All right, this one comes from Justin Sawyer at It's Gotta Be Kane 1. And here we go with some good, good topics here. Is it just me or is this the worst WWE has been in years? First half of 2011 was bad, but these days might even be worst. And I got, I got another question here from at Axe underscore crazy. Hi, Aaron, is this the most negative and down you've ever been on WWE ever? What changes would you make? to fix the company. Please answer in video, thanks. I do feel that right now, WWE is at its lowest point it's been in in several years, possibly since 93 through 96. I would not say it's the worst it's ever been. I think that the talent roster is far superior to the roster back in 93, 94, 95. But the writing, I think, is arguably the worst it's ever been. WWE is coasting along. They're making money, and I just feel they're not putting the effort with the writing. I just, I feel it's so weak with, with constant contract signings. They did it to me again. It, it's becoming a joke now. I went on Twitter and I sarcastically said, I don't believe Rollins versus Cena is official until there's an, a contract signing in the ring. And uh, I, I tweeted it to at WWE and WWE Universe, and I doubt this had anything to do with it. But sure enough, on Monday, it's a contract signing. And I was like, really? Um, the fact that they do stuff like that, contract signing, 
there, there's nothing compelling about the WWE product other than the wrestling. I miss the storylines. I miss the soap opera aspect of WWE. A, a reason to tune in every week. A cliffhanger. There, there's nothing. Um, going back to the 80s, you had Hulk Hogan versus Randy Savage. The, the love triangle storyline with Miss Elizabeth. It was a storyline that played out over a year. And at every major show, you had a development in the storyline. You had Undertaker versus Kane where every week, every month, you would see a change in the storyline. Something else would happen to advance it. With Austin and McMahon, same thing. The, the storyline would always continue to evolve, and you would have to tune in every week to see the next chapter in the story. What is the story with John Cena and Seth Rollins? Cena just doesn't think Rollins is a worthy champion. He thinks he's a joke. Guess what? This is the same storyline they've done with Cena Month after month after month, it just goes on and on and on, as Cesaro puts it. And just about every storyline is is nothing really. It's just two guys having a match. And um, I know that that's more realistic, but WWE is entertainment. And I watch WWE to be entertained. I'm not trying to sound like Vince Russo here, but it's the truth. I like WWE for the entertainment factor. I like the the over-the-top characters, and I like the storylines. And to me, the storylines are very weak, and the booking is terrible. The booking is just the worst it's ever been, almost. Because, for instance, on Raw, you had The Miz losing to Ryback. The Miz is the number one contender for the IC title, along with Big Show. So why is Miz even in the match? He, he lost to Ryback. It doesn't make any sense. Wouldn't you actually make your challenger credible before a pay-per-view. Um, I don't get it. It's stuff like that. Lots of little things that WWE does. And, you know, the announcing is terrible. Um, you know, I, I, I've gotten questions from people how to fix WWE. I got another question here from uh, Tiffer, um, K at K Tiffer on Twitter. How would you bring WWE back to mainstream and make it popular again as it was in the 90s other than making it TV 14? Well, that is one issue because back in the late 90s, WWE was able to be more edgy and they could experiment and, and go all over the place with their content. You know, they could tackle topics like racism and, and stuff like that. Today, WWE is, is so politically correct that there, there, there's certain areas they will not even go. And, you know, they're, they're so worried about offending people that they don't do anything even remotely risky in, in terms of the content. So that, that is a bit of a handicap. Uh, but at the end of the day, you don't need to be TV 14 to have compelling, well-written television or movies or anything. I mean, you, you look at Disney, that, that stuff is PG and, uh, you know, they have some of the best storytelling around. Um, there are other things they can do, but they probably won't. Um, you know, I got this question here uh, regarding Randy Orton um, from Lime Tenet at Lime T98. Why the hell did Orton win the triple threat match? Why couldn't they have just given Owens and Cesaro the opportunity? We've seen enough of Rollins and Orton. Why has Vince so stubborn when it comes to giving opportunities to younger talent? This was uh, regarding the, the Raw in uh, Washington the other week. One of the things that I would do is take John Cena off television, take Randy Orton off television, give them an extended vacation. Um, the problem with the John Cena and Randy Orton characters is they've been around for 10 plus years now and it's every single week. The TV character is extremely old. Um, you know, when Hulk Hogan was around uh, during his heyday, the thing about Hogan is he only appeared once in a while. He only appeared on television once every couple of months for a pay-per-view, and every once in a while he would do a promo, but that was it. You didn't see Hulk Hogan every single week, so he didn't get overexposed. The Orton and Cena characters are just extremely overexposed, especially Cena, because he hasn't changed his character at all. At least Orton has gone back and forth between heel and face over the years. Cena hasn't. And uh, his character is just incredibly stale. And I get it. WWE doesn't want to take a chance with Cena because the merchandise is selling. WWE's making money off of John Cena. 
He is their cash cow, and they're afraid to change his character and risking losing money as a result, even though if he if he did turn heel, it could catch fire and uh, maybe his merchandise would increase. You never know unless you take the chance. But WWE just doesn't want to do that. And, you know, that is a problem, I think, in the long run because, you know, you ask me what could make WWE popular like it was in the 90s again. You need to make new stars. It begins and ends with making new stars. That is how the business has reached its peak, its peaks over the years. You look at Hulk Hogan. He was a rising star in the mid-80s. And then the business tanked for a while in the early 90s. And it wasn't until Stone Cold Steve Austin rose up that business started to get hot again. And then The Rock got really big. And then Triple H and Mankind and all these new stars um, you know, emerged. And then the business took a little bit of a hit again after uh, WCW was sold. Uh, and then once John Cena and Randy Orton and Batista, those guys rose up, the business started to get hot again in 2005. Um, so it goes in cycles and it, it always rises when you create new stars. But when, when has WWE really created a, a major mainstream superstar since John Cena or Randy Orton? Yes, they have CM Punk, they had Daniel Bryan, um, but have they really had somebody at a Hulk Hogan slash Rock slash Austin slash Cena level uh, since Cena? They haven't because they haven't they haven't pushed a new talent and they keep relying on the same people. They keep relying on John Cena and Randy Orton. Um, and until that changes, um, I don't think we are going to see a, a new boom period in WWE. But that is one of the major issues, in my opinion. They need to make new stars. They need to have new guys on top. And, uh, you know, I, I'm all for WWE cycling people in and out, having John Cena take six months off, let him recharge his batteries. I know he's passionate. He loves wrestling. He wants to be part of it 24-7. But give the guy a break. Let him take a vacation for a while. Give him a six-month vacation, and then you can bring him back, and he'll be somewhat fresh because he's been gone for a while. I would do that. I would, I would give those guys a break. And, uh, you know, they have given Orton some time off, which I think has been good. But they, they really need to do it at the top, and that's with John Cena. And uh, I wish they would give him a character change, but, you know, they, they see him as Superman, and they want him to stay true to his character, the guy that never gives up and, and never backs down. They, they, they are hell-bent on him remaining as that character. So if, if you want him to stay as that character, at least um, give him a break and take him off TV for a while. But it's probably not going to happen. The only way that John Cena is going to be off television is if he decides to walk away or if he gets hurt, unfortunately. Um, and if that doesn't happen, he's just going to keep doing the same thing he's doing. And, you know, a year from now, the next heel will come up and, and Cena will say he's not worthy and he's a joke. And he's going to rise above hate and never give up and, and kick his ass, blah, 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 blah. And the cycle will just go on and on and on, as Cesaro would say. And um, moving on here, we're well, sort of still on the topic of Randy Orton, actually, uh, yeah, this, this one's not too positive about Orton. Uh, from Philip um, at Pip SAFC. In my, opinion, in my opinion, Randy Orton is the most overrated superstar ever. He has been given everything from day everything from day one. Well, I disagree with that. I, I think Randy Orton has has stepped up and has earned his spot in WWE. He he proved himself that of being a worthy competitor and a, a, a very good worker right from the beginning. I mean, I look back at the match with Mick Foley at Backlash 2004. Randy Orton busted his ass in that match. He, he was taking crazy bumps. He was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Foley in that hardcore match. He went through the thumbtacks. He earned his spot in WWE. You, you look at matches like Backlash 2004... You know, at that point, I, I knew Randy Orton was on his way to becoming a main eventer. And sure enough, he won the title at SummerSlam that year. And uh, I, I saw it coming. When, when he had that match with Foley at Backlash, that was a star-making performance. You know, Orton is not the most charismatic guy in WWE, but he, he's as solid of a worker as they come. He knows what he's doing in that ring. He is a true professional when he gets in the ring, except for when he gets pissed off. But, um, you know, he, he really hasn't lost his temper lately. Um, you know, guys do tend to lose their temper and that's okay. But Randy Orton ha has um, been as solid as anybody in WWE. You know, that guy really knows what he's doing in the ring and he deserves the spot he's in. 
but his character has gotten stale over the years. I, I will say that, but that that's not his fault. I think Orton has has uh, given his best performance every night he 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 steps in the ring. And uh, I got this question from a guy who is a Randy Orton fan from Ethan J. Hanley. Hey, Aaron is a big Randy Orton fan. Do you think he will get another WWE title run? Thank you. I think it's inevitable. I think he has nothing but time. Randy Orton will probably not take any significant vacation from WWE unless he wants to step away for a while. Um, like John Cena, he's passionate about WWE. It's his, it's, it's his life. It, it, it is what he is passionate about. And um, I think he'll be around as long as his body holds up. And uh, if he's around another four or five, maybe even a decade, um, I think it's inevitable that one of these days he will have another WWE title run. Maybe two, maybe three, maybe four. Um, depends how long he's around. But as long as he's around, he's going to be right up there at the top in WWE. Um, and if that's the case, you know, a very good chance he will be champion at least one more time, if not more. All right, this next one comes from Calvin Bowman. Hey Aaron, what did you think of Jonathan Coachman's heel turn at SummerSlam in Shane McMahon and Eric Bischoff's match? I thought it was okay. I think uh, Jonathan Coachman was better as a heel than as a face. I mean, he was very annoying as a babyface, in my opinion. And when he turned heel, uh, you know, him becoming Bischoff's lackey, I thought it was good stuff. And, you know, him getting in the face of Jim Ross, you know, I, I, I liked it. And, uh, you know, The Rock was making fun of him the whole time, even before he turned heel. And it was just more fitting once Coachman went heel. You know, it just made it all the more entertaining when The Rock would uh, rip into him. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I thought that it was a good heel turn. And, um, you know, I thought I thought Coach did a good job as a heel and uh, feuding with Jr. and the King and all that stuff. I thought it was entertaining. And I got this one here from Hamp Connell. Any chance you and Jeff Meacham will ever do a greatest quotes in wrestling history show? That That's an interesting topic. Um, you know, it's more opinion based. You know, it's not something where I can really critique a quote other than how over it gets with fans um, and how memorable it is, at least in my own opinion. Um, but, you know, I, I, I did do a, a greatest theme songs video a few years back. Um, so I'll, I'll talk with Jeff about it. That That's certainly a possibility. If you guys want to see that video, leave a comment and let me know. Uh, if, I, if I get a lot of good feedback, then uh, yeah, I think we'll, we'll at least consider doing that. All right, this next one comes from Jeff W. May 3rd, 89, at, at May 3rd, 89 on Twitter. Which feuds in WWE, if any, over the last six years do you think deserve to end inside Hell in a Cell if it hadn't been turned into a pay-per-view? Well, I think any major storyline or feud should have ended in Hell in a Cell. You know, not all of them. You don't want to overdo it. But, you know, some of the bigger feuds, like Randy Orton and John Cena, I think that that feud in 2009 should have ended with Hell in a Cell. But it was backwards. They did Hell in a Cell, and then they did the Iron Man match at Bragging Rights. And um, in my opinion, the Hell in a Cell match, it's the most demonic structure in the history of WWE. That's how you should end a feud. To do that and then continue the feud with an Iron Man match, it's just backwards. Backwards booking. Um, and WWE's done that before. Um, perhaps the uh, Rock and uh, John Cena match, the rematch, you know, the, the, the biggest rematch of all time from WrestleMania 29, that could have been a Hell in a Cell match. Um, stuff like that, you know. Uh, Brock Lesnar versus Triple H. Um, you know, they, they did that that trilogy. The third match was a cage match. You know, that's good, but I think it would have been a little bit more fitting to do a Hell in a Cell match to end that feud once and for all. Um, so yeah, that, that's how I feel about it. If you're going to have a big ongoing feud between two top stars over the course of several matches, um, it would make logical sense for the last one to be Hell in a Cell. Rather than just doing Hell in a Cell mandatory because you have to, since the upcoming pay-per-view is called Hell in a Cell, and you must have a Hell in a Cell match. All right, this one comes from T Dog Seven Six Nine. Could you see a scenario where Triple H versus The Rock at WrestleMania Two, WrestleMania Thirty Two, is a certain stipulation? Personally, a basic one-on-one -on -one match just doesn't cut it. 
Well, I think a one-on-one -on -one match would work because number one, it's at WrestleMania, and The Rock and Triple H have never had a one-on-one -on -one match at WrestleMania, so it's special for that reason alone. But I see where you're coming from. Uh, you know, going back to the previous question, you could do Triple H versus The Rock Hell in a Cell. To my knowledge, I don't recall a Triple H versus Rock one-on-one -on -one Hell in a Cell match. I know they were part of that six-man Hell in a Cell match at Armageddon, but I don't think they ever went one-on-one -on -one inside Hell in a Cell. That's something you can do for WrestleMania to uh, up the ante a little bit. But if they don't do it, it wouldn't surprise me uh, because The Rock is The Rock, and who knows how many crazy bumps he wants to take inside Hell, Hell in a Cell, even though they don't really do much these days in, in Hell in a Cell matches. But um, I, I think it's more likely if WWE does that match, they'll just do a one-on-one a -on -one match because it, it's special enough as it is with the two of them facing off at WrestleMania for the very first time one-on-one. -on -one. You know, WWE can market that, and that's really all they need for it. All right, this one comes from Jason Knight. Hey, Aaron, can you see the Divas Division ever headlining a pay-per-view, especially WrestleMania as Charlotte is determined to do? Well, the, the Divas headlining WrestleMania, I would definitely say is highly unlikely in all likelihood. But I mentioned a few video videos ago the idea of an all Divas network special. If WWE is going to keep doing network specials, I think one of these days there's a good chance we'll get an all Divas event. And if that's the case, then you could certainly have a, a, uh, a, a high-profile Divas match as the main event of a pay-per-view when it's all Divas. Um, that I see as a possibility. Um, even a minor normal pay-per-view like a TLC or a fast lane, I think it's unlikely WWE would put a Divas match as the headlining match. That would surprise me if WWE ever did that. Uh, just, just don't see WWE going that far with the Divas revolution. Just my gut feeling on it. All right, this one comes from Mr. Yuck. If or when Goldust returns, do you think his feud with Stardust will pick up where it left off? Or should they tag again? I was really disappointed with how that feud played out. I felt that we should have gotten Goldust versus Stardust one-on-one -on -one at WrestleMania. Um, now, I, I feel it might be too little too late, and now that Dusty has passed away, I, I think it's unlikely they'll go in that direction. Um, who knows if Goldust will even return to the main WWE roster. I mean, the thing about his comeback a few years ago is he was able to work with Cody as a tag team, and there was a novelty in them being a tag team. Um, and because that feud ended on such a, a sour note, um, there, there's really no momentum. There, there's no good reason to bring him back and start up that feud again. I mean, the, the, the momentum is completely gone. Um, there, there's really no interest in doing it. it it's just, it, it's too late, I think. Um, I really feel it's too late, unfortunately, to do something with them again. Maybe they could team up again, but once again, the novelty of it is gone. Um, so I would be surprised if, if Goldust came back and they they did another feud or worked together as a tag team. I I, I just think it's unlikely. Maybe, maybe a one-off, you know, like at WrestleMania, they could reunite for one more match as a team. Maybe that'll happen. All right, this one comes from Nathan Hawks, at nhawks94 on Twitter. Do you think allowing celebrities or WWE talent that aren't superstars compete in the ring is unsafe? I think it's only unsafe if you have them do something that they do not feel comfortable doing. Uh, in, the, in the case of the Arrow, he's training for the match at SummerSlam, and they're not going to have him do anything crazy. He, he'll, he will be there, and by doing a tag match... They can just have him come in and do a few moves, get get some pops from the crowd, and that's the end of it. You know, that, that's really all they need. And, um, you know, as long as he does the training for it, which he has, um, he should be fine. Uh, there hasn't really been any, any major problem with somebody um, who's a celebrity getting hurt inside a WWE ring because they've never really put a celebrity at any major risk. Um, you know, the guys that have been around, like Mike Tyson, um, that have gotten physical, um, 
Lawrence Taylor. I mean, he he had the match with uh, Bam Bam Bigelow, and you know it was it was very safe. You know they 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 trained for it, and it was it was well choreographed. Um, so yeah, as long as they train for it and prepare for it, and uh, don't take any kind of crazy risks, then uh, you know I I don't think it's unsafe. You know, it, it, it's safe if you are prepared for it. All right, this one comes from Jordan Helton. Hey, Aaron, what do you think of Ronda Rousey coming to WWE and becoming Divas Champion? I'm all for it. And I'm sure Vince and Triple H and Stephanie, they are all for it as well. If, if they could get Ronda Rousey in WWE tomorrow, they would. That would be a dream for them. But of course, she's with UFC and she's the hottest act arguably in UFC and in the MMA world right now. She's not going anywhere for the time being. Um, but eventually, when, when the day comes that she's done with UFC... Um, I definitely see her going to WWE and having a run, and um, she'll probably be the, the diva face of the company. Uh, I, I absolutely see that happening. I, I, I think there's a very good chance she will be in WWE and one day be Divas Champion. I, I, I think that's a safe bet. All right, this one comes from at Devin Sharon. I think I botched that name again. I apologize for that. I think you corrected me on Twitter, too. I'm sorry about that. If you could be in charge of TNA, what could you do to make them just as big as WWE, if that's even possible at this point? It's too little, too late. I, I really hate to say that about TNA. I, I really wanted them to succeed. And, you know, that's the thing about TNA. Over the years, people have said that I'm anti-TNA and I'm out to get them. That That is the complete opposite. I have been wanting TNA to succeed for so many years, I feel that competition is what WWE needs to really get them to produce more compelling television. And, uh, you know, competition is, is great for business. It's great for the fans. It's great for the workers. It, it, it's really great for everyone. Um, I wanted TNA to succeed just as much as anybody else, if not more. Because when TNA succeeds, more people are watching wrestling. More people are going on NoDQ.com. It's better for me and my business. Uh, so TNA doing poorly is not good for my business. That That's the bottom line. And as a fan, TNA not doing good is is bad for business. That That's just the way it is. Um, but TNA, the brand is so damaged now. It, it is. TNA as a brand is all but dead. Um, nobody takes TNA seriously. It's on a network that many people don't get, and uh, the few shows they do run, nobody shows up. They have to give away tickets to the TV tapings, um, and even the pay-per-views, they have to give away tickets and, and heavily discounted tickets. Um, the brand is just, I think, beyond repair, honestly. I don't know if there's anything that can be done. Um, TNA was doing well for a while as an alternative, and that was really what they needed to do. But once Hogan and Bischoff came in, they just started repeating the same mistakes that WCW made, and uh, that led to their downfall. All right, this one comes from at Zim underscore world 666. Hey Aaron, do you want Sheamus to successfully cash in his Money in the Bank briefcase? And who would have been a better choice? I mentioned this in the predictions video for SummerSlam. I don't feel Sheamus has been lighting the world on fire with his act as of late. Um, it's just not working for me on a main event level. I don't I don't feel he's credible enough as a main eventer. Um, I don't think he should successfully cash it in. Wouldn't surprise me if he did win the title because WWE's been high on him for several years. Um, I think Roman Reigns would have been a better choice, as I mentioned a couple months ago, even though it would have been popular with some people. I think uh, WWE should have given Roman Reigns another shot to become the next John Cena or whatever. Um, just be smarter with how they book him and uh, not not get people booing him. Um, and maybe they'll still do it. Maybe they'll still they'll still go all the way with Roman Reigns. Maybe they're they're going to wait until. Uh, WrestleMania 32 season starts up to uh, give him the big push. Maybe he'll win the, the Royal Rumble next year. I'm already getting questions about the Rumble, and I really have no idea at this point. So, you know, I'll talk more about that as we get closer to the Rumble. But to answer the question, um, no, I do not want Sheamus to 
successfully cash it in. Although I could see it happening at SummerSlam um, as a way to uh, have Cena lose the match without having to lose cleanly to Rollins. All right, last question here from Slow Speed Net. You're and I'm so confused. Aren't the Bellas supposed to be heels? If so, then why did Brie get such a huge reaction on Raw the other week in Washington? Well, I think it was because of the fact that it was in Daniel Bryan's home state. And uh, everyone knows Brie's married to Daniel Bryan, or most people do. Uh, so I think that's really the only reason why she got cheered. So the fans can do the yes chance and all that stuff. Um, yeah, but then again, it's also hard to tell because they, they switch roles so many times that it, it's hard to tell. One week it seems like they're baby faces, the next it seems like they're heels. Um, so maybe the fans like you were just confused. And since they were in uh, the greater Seattle area, they decided to uh, cheer for Bree since she's Daniel Bryan's wife. All right, that'll wrap it up for this 30-minute edition of No DQ and a video. Thanks, as always, for watching. Subscribe at youtube.com slash no DQ CAW. If you enjoyed the video, the best thing you can do to show your support is tell a friend. Spread the word on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, any website you go on. Have them check out No DQ and a video. Stay tuned to nodq.com for SummerSlam coverage. Follow me at Aaron Rift on Twitter and at no DQ, D -O -T -C -O -M. Uh, you can get all the latest news there and my opinions on all the stuff going on in WWE right now and all my controversial remarks. You know, um, There are a lot of people out there that think I'm out of line with my comments and they say, why don't you just stop watching, not realizing that I do this for a living and I am passionate about wrestling and this is what I've been following my whole life and uh, this is what I'm doing. I enjoy my job for the most part. It does give me a headache sometimes, but you know, I, I love wrestling and I will continue to watch and critique the shows, whether people like it or not. So there you have it. I'll see you guys next time.